see in all of my time and watching college basketball, women's college basketball, and in all of my time watching the WNBA, um, I like to say that WNBA fans, yes, they are WNBA fans, even before Caitlin Clark. Um, I like to say that they're a little bit more classier than than college women's college basketball fans because um, some of these women's college basketball fans, um, and this video is, is, is not intended at anybody who um, is mature, professional, um, for my people that who totally understand where I'm coming from, that identify and, and view this game with class and grace, I'm not referring to you. But some women's college basketball fans can be messy, uh, petty, um, there's racism, there's ignorance, and it's, it's layered, you know, amongst many teams. And the thing is, I just I just feel like I'm, I'm so, uh, first of all, again, I, I must express this. I am happy that Caitlin Clark decided to um, leave that fifth year on the table and go ahead and go to the WNBA and explore the next level. Um, this for her is the ultimate challenge, um, the ultimate task that I know that she is down for, she is prepared for, and I just feel like even though people are trying their best to bring that uh, a college nastiness into the pro game, I, I don't feel like that's going to happen. Now, I, I know that people are trying to always pair Caitlin off against someone, but, you know, this social media itself is messy. Um, it serves a positive and it also has a negative side. So essentially social media, um, it has good apples and it's, and it's got its rotten, rotten core. And the thing about it is, I don't think it's, it's ever really going to stop because people love to square players off against players. Um, my hope and intent is that Asia Wilson gets a shoot. I mean, she's my favorite player. She's a lot of pe a lot of people's favorite players. She's amazing. You know, she's a champion. She's loaded with accolades. Um, when I look at Caitlin Clark, who's in my top five, believe it or not, and she hasn't even stepped on the floor. Um, I know that the pressure on her is incredibly tough, um, but if anybody can handle it, it's, it's, it's her that can. But I do feel like it's it's unfair sometimes just from the standpoint of she didn't ask for this. You know, she not, she's never had her hand in the sky um, begging to be, you know, anointed as the chosen one. Um, it's just that, you know, it's the label that can't. You know, people saw the... The individuals, the media, the fans, everyone sees that Caitlyn's got one of the splashiest games ever. One of the sauciest games ever for a, a, a women's basketball player. And they just seen, you know, dollar seal, dollar signs. I said dollar seals, dollar signs, markability, marketability. Um, I can't talk, guys. But they just seen all of these different opportunities, sponsorships. You know, so obviously just the greenbacks and, you know, it's, it's unfair to a degree because as great as she is and as much as she elevates the game, Caitlin Clark is not the only great player out there. Um, and for me, um, I, I, I always set out to just try to let people know and understand that, you know, she, she is a, she is an amazing player. But she's not solely the only one, if that must be pinpointed or pointed out. Um, there's so much great talent. Um, I don't just watch women's college basketball for one player. A lot of people do. Um, a lot of people became Iowa Hawkeyes bandwagon fans. A lot of people are going to come become Indiana Fever bandwagon fans. I don't have anything to do with that. I can't stop that. Um, obviously, it's been a dilemma for me. I feel like I went back and forth whether I'm going to have two teams or one. But I will tell you guys this. Um, I'm definitely an Aces fan. Um, I definitely will be watching Caitlin's uh, uh, first season, of course, with the Fever. We all will, I would like to think. But, you know, I also would like to pinpoint that 
you know, we just need to allow her room in the event that she has missteps, which is very likely. Um, and I think part of it is why people are so elevated and excited by the fact that, you know, Raven Johnson was able to, you know, at times get the best of Caitlin Clark in the championship game. You know, people saw the aggressive defense that West Virginia applied to Iowa and Caitlin and people were like, you know, boom, boom, look at this, look at that, look at that, you know, Caitlin's being locked down, you know, people, people, how can I put this? It's similar to LeBron. People are going to love and hate Caitlin Clark and in the middle as well. Some people are going to dislike her. Some people are going to be on the fence about it. Um, these days you cannot make anybody love everybody it's almost impossible me i'm somewhat of a different breed um i've i've adapted to tessa johnson very well camilla cardoso very well um i ain't like how raven johnson succeeded against caitlin but it's i don't have anything against her i don't hold no personal grudges because i don't know any of these players um, I don't play for these teams. I just root for Iowa and UCLA. I don't, you know, I, I don't have anything riding on it. There's no money, nothing like that. Um, I don't, I don't dislike Angel Reese at all. Um, and, and one thing I would encourage people to do is to judge players on your own accord. Um, watch them. Don't let somebody else brainwash you into whether or not you're going to love or hate a player. But look, guys, I just wanted to get this off my chest with these little seven minutes. And I want to tell you guys, I appreciate you guys who helped me get over 500 sometime last week. Salute, salute, salute to all of you. It's appreciated. And uh, it's RC. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead. If you like the content, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. RC is out.